EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, from the historic Pebble Beach Golf Links, live first-round coverage of the Tiburon Championship. This promises to be a fun four days, a lot of storylines to get to as we check out the early leaderboard. Kevin Streelman is your leader. He's on the move early at five under par. Well, this is the one you dreamed about, isn't it? Just a little baby wedge that kisses the clouds and drops softly on that tiny green here at the seventh. You and your maker, there's nothing better in the world than to be playing the seventh hole and playing it well here at Pebble Beach. Let's get into the action as we pick things up at the par three seventh. Well, Frank, we're back here at Pebble Beach for the second time this year. Now it's the Tiburon Championship. And listen, this is a tournament folks want to win. There's no doubt about that. But, but I think also most of our golfers have one eye on next week, and that is the PGA Championship. What do you think? No doubt about that, Rich. Uh, but this is more than a tune-up. We know that because it is Pebble Beach. This is America's St. Andrews. So anytime there's a chance not just to play, but play a tournament at Pebble Beach, most people are coming. So another event getting underway here, Frank, and we look at our featured golfer coming in fresh off another victory four short days ago. You know, it's funny what confidence can do for you. Early in the season, you're probably just hoping to try and make some cuts, contend once in a while. Now you're coming into tournaments as one of the favorites to win. As long as you don't get ahead of yourself, because, you know, there's that sort of phrase you can be a little too cocky. Uh, confidence is a good thing, though. I just think take a little step back. I mean, all the back slapping's finished. You won last week. Remember how you did that. Remember how well you played. What got there. There was a series of good shots. So Thursday, you've got to start doing exactly the same with that same attitude. Yep, well done. That's in for par here at seven. And he'll remain at one under par. From the famous par three seventh to the equally famous par four eighth. Frank, what a hole. It is, Rich, and it starts, in my opinion, the best three consecutive par fours in golf. Uh, this one's a little bit of a blind tee shot. That white rock that's just up ahead, uh, that's your line. If you hit it over the right side of that, your run out is about 250 yards. If you go a little left of that, you've got another 20 yards up your sleeve. But do not go further than that. Issues there. Good tee shot in the short grab. Walking the course today, let's bring in Nota Begay the third. Aggressive off the tee, ball lucky not to run out of fairway and into the ocean, but now sitting in an ideal spot with access to the green. And that ball looked good in the air. You'd like it to be a little closer, but still inside 40 feet, just going to have to be careful with the lag putting. Look here at birdie. And he does not need to hit this hard at all. Going to catch some momentum down the slope, but he is going to have to aim it out to the left. that out there far enough and it winds up sliding by to the right. Okay, that in four par here at the eighth. And he'll remain in red figures at one under. We finished the front side with what is often considered the most difficult hole at Pebble Beach, 483 yard par 4 ninth, ocean all down the right and bunkers and deep rough on the left. No room for error here.
Yeah, that's a good tee shot right there. Got a little extra run out. That's where you want to be. From a bit of a down slope here, his second to the par four. Good clean contact and a nice result and a chance for birdie coming up. This one measures out to 15 feet. In for birdie, and that score moves to two under par. Start of the inward half and another big and bold par four. Frank with the ocean yet again running the entire length of that right side. Yeah, you call it the ocean, I call it the world's largest water hazard, but um, <laughs> Look again on the other side of the fairway, and you'll see those three bunkers. They, Needless to say, they have to be avoided. But um, you do actually have to hit your tee shot just inside those, because once again, you've got a fairway that tilts left to right. Oh, that was a beautiful golf swing right there. Everything working in harmony and a great result in the fairway. Second shot coming up. Let's bring in Iona Steven. Just a little under 120 yards to get you to the front of the green. One, three, four, the number all the way to the flag. Pin smack bang in the middle. Well, not super close, but uh, safely on the green. Here we go. This one for birdie. So that's in for par to start this backside, and he'll stay at two under. Now we come to the 11th hole, and now the golf course heads up and inland, away from the water. Only 370 yards, best to be on the left side of the fairway. That will then open up the approach into what is one of the smaller greens here at Pebble Beach. This a tee shot that fits the eye, and that'll be just fine.
So now from the left side of the fairway, this is a second shot. This is straight at it. It's a really good line. Oh, I always knew that was going to be a good shot when it left the club face. What's that? Eight or nine feet? Excellent shot. Nine feet left here for Birdie. Okay, that ball online all the way. It's a birdie here at 11. Our featured golfer in a good position, you'd have to say. Just three shots off the pace after round one. Just got to keep the leaders in check, though. Can't afford to get, uh, well, further away. So that'll do it for my partner here in the tower, Frank Nabilo. For Nota Begay, Iona Steven, and all our crew, Rich Lerner saying, we'll see you next time on EA Sports PGA Tour. EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, from the Monterey Peninsula and Pebble Beach, live second-round coverage of the Tiburon Championship. Things starting to slowly take shape here on this Friday. For some, it is a race for the top prize. For others, it's a fight to stick around for the weekend as we show you the leaderboard. We've got a tie at the top at six under par. Meanwhile, our featured golfer, no lock to play the weekend, hovering a few shots inside the cut line, entering play. We'll get right out to the action here as we head to the tee at the par four first. Yeah, this not a terribly long hole, so precision off the tee is the key, and the iron is the right call there. Second shot coming up, and we say hello to Iona Steven. It's 132 yards to the front, 135 to the hole, pin front right. It's a sneaky one. This one's looking good. Rich, is that eight or nine feet? I don't know about that, but it is a great approach shot. A straightforward look here for Birdie. Yeah, that's a good putt. It's a birdie here at one. And following the opening 69, he'll get it to one under for his round here. 
Frank, interestingly, this hole number two plays as a par four for the U.S. Open. It is a par five. It's absolutely gettable, and players must take advantage. Certainly, Rich. Off that back tee, uh, really, you've got to grab a driver. I know there's bunkers left and right, but the decision is whether that tee shot finishes in the fairway, because if it does, you're going to have a crack at this par five and two. If it doesn't, then you play the layup. A good swing and a good result, as that is safely into the fairway. Down on the course, let's check in with Nota Begay the third. When you find yourself in the fairway on the second at Pebble, you have a great opportunity to take advantage of one of the easiest holes on the course. Got every bit of that through it all the way there and got it to stop. Home in two on the par five. This one just about straight at it for Eagle. Take advantage of a par five. It's in for an eagle three. Superb. On to the 397-yard par four third, where some players drive it over the trees on the left to cut the dogleg, while others play it more conventionally. This is a pretty hole, the third. 397 yards, just a gentle dogleg to the left. And you do have the option if you're longer, maybe you just take it up over those trees and cut the dog leg, leaving yourself very short shot in. Or you can play it out to the right, have a little bit more in, but still certainly with a good chance at birdie. Yeah, if you see shortish par fours like this, it's a great time to bring out the irons, and that is going to work out well. This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze. Ah, uh, good shot. Safely on the green and a birdie chance. Ten foot putt left. Hmm. They say he should have made that. that safely in it's a par here at the third and he'll remain at six under par frank this is where it becomes really obvious where you are you're at pebble beach there's the pacific ocean and this begins that magnificent seven hole stretch right along the ocean a fun hole not long 331 yards up the hill we're at the fourth. Yeah, and each one of those seven holes that you refer to, Rich, uh, there's a common theme, which is don't look right. 
because that's pretty much the ocean the whole way around. Um, and this one here, that decision has to be made. 330 to the front of the green. If there's a hint of a breeze, you could try and drive it. Otherwise, really, you've got to worry about that pot bunker. It's uh, between 230 and 250 yards. But um, as I first said, do not go right. No need to get overly aggressive with the driver here. This, a long iron, and it does the job well. A back right hole location here as he gets set for his second to the par four. I think I'd be fairly pleased with that, Frank. What do you think? I certainly do. It was so, so good. Okay, that one finished off. It's a par here at four. And he'll stay right where he is. We arrive now at the 189-yard par three called the new fifth. Despite being redesigned by Jack Nicklaus late last century, safest play here is to the left center of the green. Did knock down the flag stick there, but he is hole high and he does have a reasonable chance at birdie. Birdie putt coming up, down to Noda. And a bit of concern here coming straight down the hill, but one thing in his favor, there isn't a whole lot of break. Nope, good effort, but that's going to wander a few feet by. That one finished off. It is a part here at five, and he's going to remain one shot off the pace. A tremendous par five here, the sixth hole. Frank, you can plainly see Stillwater Cove on the right. Where do you want to put this tee shot? When you look at that tee that you're on for a start, Rich, you're 20 yards above. So whatever you hit's going to go at least 20 yards further. So I look at that first bunker, 270, really only playing 250 yards, and then the fairway sloping towards the right. So even a three wood for some of the longer players, just something that hits around there, could even be a long iron, it's going to scoot forward. If you get 270 yards out of your tee shot, I mean, you can still reach this par five and two. Oh, this doesn't look promising. Uh, and that ball not wanting to cooperate, and it is into the hazard. So he'll take the drop and now go about trying to somehow save par, and this will be his third to the par five.
where all the elements of his game have been in sync today. A terrific shot right there. It's all about getting it inside that three-foot circle around the hole. That was a really nice shot. Safely in for par here at the sixth. And he'll remain at four under. So for our featured golfer, Frank, it is on to the weekend. Who knows, if you get out early on Saturday, try and post a number, see what happens. Exactly. There's such a fine line, Rich, between playing well and sort of not struggling, but just mediocre. Putt goes in here or there. Uh, that could easily change tomorrow. Make a couple of birdies early, pop a long one in, and all of a sudden you're off and running. So that's it for us. For Frank, Noda, Iona, and our entire crew, Rich Lerner saying... Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on EA Sports PGA Tour.